Starship Flight 8 is closer than ever. This is no longer just speculation. It's an official announcement from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. They really outsmarted the FAA to launch Starship. So, when exactly will the Starship Flight 8 launch take place? And what has SpaceX done to prepare for this crucial mission? Let's find out on today's episode. But first, we need your support. This is my new space channel, and we're on the way to reaching the first 100 subscribers. Your support means the universe to us. Hit subscribe now and get ready for an out-of-this-world adventure. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. Elon Musk recently surprised viewers during a video about Grok AI by sharing unexpected news about SpaceX's upcoming Starship Flight 8. While experts were discussing the mission, Musk confidently stated, It might be, sir. Suggesting the launch could occur even before the previously FCC permitted date of February 24th. Though Musk's predictions aren't always 100% accurate, he has maintained that he only commits to goals he believes are achievable. As a SpaceX supporter, there's reason for optimism about a potential launch this February or even earlier. While this timeline may seem aggressive, SpaceX's current operational tempo makes such a quick turnaround possible. Many people may wonder about the FAA license. However, we firmly believe that SpaceX's continuous efforts to accelerate the investigation process will also help push the government agency to issue the license more quickly. Why not? In recent launches such as Flight 5, Flight 6 and Flight 7, the FAA granted licenses even sooner than expected. As for SpaceX, since Flight 7, SpaceX has been working continuously to prepare the hardware for Flight 8. The mission requires three key components, Booster 15, Ship 34, and the launch pad infrastructure. Ship 34 has already shown progress, completing a significant static fire test on February 12th. This rare test involved firing the rocket engines for a full minute as part of an extended testing protocol. The focus on propulsion system testing is particularly notable given that fuel system issues appeared to be the root cause of Flight 7's failure when an engine bay fire led to the vehicle's destruction over the Caribbean. According to SpaceX, the static fire test engaged all six engines and tested various power configurations to simulate the conditions Starship would experience during actual flight. This is because, according to SpaceX, the upper stage static fire test will inform upgrades to the ship's hardware and flight profile before the ship can fly on Flight 8. Meanwhile, Booster 15 successfully completed its static fire test on February 9th. The test went smoothly, with no reported issues, demonstrating the stability of the rocket hardware SpaceX has prepared for Flight 8. As for Pad A, work continues to prepare the launch pad for the upcoming mission. The launch pad is typically a major focus before each flight. In the past, SpaceX often needed several months to refurbish the pad between launches. However, as the pad has been continuously improved and refined to handle the immense power of 33 Raptor engines, the turnaround time for Starship launches has become shorter than ever. Looking ahead, future pad upgrades, such as Pad B at Starbase, could further streamline launch operations. Since Starship requires rapid turnaround times to meet its long-term goals for the Moon and Mars, optimizing ground infrastructure is essential. One major milestone to watch for is the removal of scaffolding from Pad A. This will be a key indicator that the launch pad is nearly ready for Starship Flight 8. And it won't be long before we see this happen, right? Show your support for SpaceX by commenting, Flight 8 is ready, below. And don't forget to subscribe to our new channel. Your support is the motivation that drives us to create daily videos with the latest updates for you. Beyond preparing for Starship Flight 8, SpaceX is also making significant progress toward full reusability. One of the most exciting advancements is the development of catch mechanisms, which are emerging as a crucial innovation. After successfully catching the Super Heavy Booster with the launch tower twice, SpaceX is now aiming for an even more ambitious goal catching the upper stage of Starship itself. This advancement was first glimpsed during Flight 7, where the Starship vehicle included initial catch hardware designs. The engineering challenges here are fascinating. While catching Super Heavy is complex enough, 
catching Starship presents additional hurdles. The upper stage must first survive the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry before attempting any catching maneuver. This creates a delicate balance in design. The catch hardware must be robust enough to secure the vehicle, but positioned carefully to avoid interference with the critical heat shield tiles. Recent footage from the Star Factory in Texas has revealed more details about these developments. The Starship, being prepared for what appears to be Flight 10, sports two distinct pins at the base of its nose cone, similar to those used on super heavy boosters. These pins will be crucial for stabilizing the vehicle during future catch attempts. The positioning of these catch points is particularly strategic. The tower must catch Starship near its top to prevent tipping, but this area is also subject to extreme re-entry temperatures. This has led SpaceX to conduct extensive testing of different heat shield regions to ensure there are no vulnerabilities where the catch hardware interfaces with the thermal protection system. Looking further ahead, Elon Musk has tied these developments to SpaceX's Mars ambitions. With Earth-Mars transfer windows occurring every two years due to planetary alignment, Musk has emphatically stated that there will be no wasted launch window, suggesting confidence in Starship's readiness for Mars missions by late 2026. Wrapping up the latest SpaceX news, let's move on to updates about the next flight of Blue Origin, SpaceX's fiercest rival. Blue Origin expects to attempt its second New Glenn launch in late spring after correcting problems that prevented the booster from landing on the first launch last month. Speaking at the 27th Annual Commercial Space Conference here on February 12, Dave Limp, chief executive of Blue Origin, suggested a propulsion issue of some kind caused the loss of the New Glenn booster during its landing attempt on the January 16 NG-1 launch. We had most of the right conditions in the engine, but we weren't able to get everything right to the engine from the tanks, he said. We think we understand what the issues are. Telemetry was lost from the booster, according to data displayed on the company's launch webcast, at about T plus 755 mark during a re-entry burn by three of the seven BE-4 engines in the booster. The company did not disclose what happened to the booster at that point, and Limp declined to go into additional details. He noted, though, that demonstrating the in-flight relight of the BE-4 engines was one thing Blue Origin could not demonstrate before the launch. It was a combination of a couple of things, he said. This was our first attempt at it. I don't want to go into too much detail because we're still going through the anomaly investigation. I feel like the team has a really good handle on it and modifications are not complicated. A second booster is in production. I don't think it's going to delay our path to flight, he said of the investigation. I think we can still fly in late spring. Blue Origin has not announced the payload for the second New Glenn launch, and Limp said the company has a couple of different options for it. We sort of treat the first three flights as development flights. If we can get commercial payloads on them, we will do so, he said. If it came to it and we just had to fly a mass simulator, we'll fly a mass simulator. Besides its efforts to relaunch the New Glenn rocket, Blue Origin is also paying close attention to projects related to the Moon and Mars. Blue Origin's ambitious plans for its New Glenn rocket and Blue Moon lunar lander are gaining momentum, with significant implications for both the Moon and Mars. While Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp did not reveal details beyond New Glenn's second launch, he hinted that one of the upcoming missions will involve the Mark I version of the Blue Moon Lander, a robotic lander designed as a technology demonstrator for its larger, crewed Blue Moon Mark II lander. The Mark II is being developed for NASA's Human Landing System HLS program, which aims to return astronauts to the lunar surface. Despite the complex nature of lunar missions, LIMP remains confident that Blue Origin will land on the Moon this year. He emphasized that the Mark I lander, capable of carrying three metric tons of cargo, would be the largest spacecraft to ever land on the Moon, a milestone that underscores Blue Origin's growing role in space exploration. LIMP also stressed the strategic importance of US leadership in lunar exploration, particularly in light of the new administration's increased focus on Mars.
He warned that the US must not allow another nation to gain a significant lead in space exploration, referencing the Cold War era Sputnik moment. When the Soviet Union's unexpected success in launching Sputnik, one sparked a technological and political race between superpowers. I think the last thing that we want is another Sputnik moment, where another nation state puts boots on the moon before we do, he said, signaling the urgency of maintaining American leadership in space. While the current focus is on lunar exploration, Limp argued that the technology's Blue Origin and other companies, such as SpaceX, are developing for the moon can also be applied to Mars missions. He highlighted that many of the core systems, including in-space refueling, engines, and orbital tugs, could serve as foundational elements for a future Mars exploration architecture. It turns out that these systems, and their operational concepts, CONOPS, are highly reusable for a Mars mission, he explained. The ability to reconfigure and repurpose these components, much like assembling Lego bricks, means that a manned mission to Mars or even a cargo mission would leverage the vast majority of existing lunar technologies. However, Limp acknowledged that a crewed mission to Mars would require additional innovations, particularly in life support systems, which he described as probably more difficult problems to solve. Despite these challenges, he remains optimistic that modifying these systems for Mars would not be as daunting as many assume. NASA is already recognizing the potential of Blue Origin's lunar technologies for Mars exploration. The agency selected Blue Origin last year to conduct concept studies on innovative approaches to Mars Sample Return MSR. On January 7th, NASA announced that it would consider commercial landers, such as Blue Origins, as part of its revised MSR architecture. Blue Origins' work on lunar engines, orbital refueling, and lander propulsion could serve as building blocks for Mars missions, providing a cost-effective and scalable pathway to deep space exploration. With New Glenn's upcoming flights, the Blue Moon lander nearing launch, and an evolving strategy that bridges the Moon and Mars, Blue Origin is positioning itself as a major player in the future of human space exploration. While SpaceX continues to dominate headlines with Starship, Blue Origin's methodical approach and technological advancements could make it a serious competitor in the race to establish a sustained human presence beyond Earth. As the space industry continues to evolve, one thing is clear. The next decade will be defined by breakthroughs in lunar exploration, deep space logistics, and interplanetary travel. And Blue Origin intends to be at the forefront. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.